Hey guys and welcome back to another Imagine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be advancing upon our third person shooter minigame once again. Today we're going to be adding in the enemy spawner. So previously we've just had enemies placed in a level which are there, but today we're going to be actually spawning them in using a spawner blueprint which we're going to make. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make. As you can see as we got in they spawned and if I took a look where I have the spawners placed, you should see they just spawn in like so and I have different ones spawning in different amounts with different delays each time as well. Now obviously I've got this into spawning quite a lot of enemies quite quickly as you can see here so you probably won't want to have it as extreme as this but I have it like this just to show you as an example and show you it working and obviously we're going to shoot all of these, reload and all that good stuff like so. So this is what we make today, again quite an extreme example here but it is just an example. You can very easily customise this to get it working perfectly for you. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my enemy folder which I have here in content, game files, enemy, right click and add a new folder called enemy spawner as you can see here. Then inside of this folder I'm going to right click and add a new blueprint class making this one an actor I'm going to name this enemy spawner bp like so. I'm going to add a component in here and just add an arrow and this is only available for us to see as developers and that's just so we can easily see where we've actually placed these down. What you can do is maybe even add a static mesh in here as well so the player can see where the enemies are going to spawn as well if you wanted but for me I'm not going to bother because you probably wouldn't even have this in the main level you might have it kind of down a corridor or something in which the enemies will run through into the main level where they kill the player but again it just depends on how you want this to look and how you've got your map set out and all that good stuff. So once we've added that we're going to go over to the event graph delete event begin overlap and event tick. We're going to use event begin play though in a short second. Underneath this we're going to right click and add a custom event naming this one spawn enemy or spawn enemies and off of event begin play we're going to call function spawn enemy. So when we begin the game we're going to spawn the enemies like so. And to actually spawn the enemies what we're going to do is we're going to right click out of this and get a spawn actor from class. Now I'm not connecting it in just yet because we do want to put something else in front of this but we're going to get the spawn actor from class dragging the class into the custom event to add a pin to node doing the same with the spawn transform as well. So now the class and spawn transform so what we're spawning and where we're spawning it are going to come from the custom event which as you can see are now also up here so we can input this in so we can change it for each different type of enemy which we want to spawn. So we can customize this even further if we wanted. And I'm going to click on the custom event and just rename these so they're easier to determine what they are. So class I'm going to name enemy and spawn transform I will leave as spawn transform. And then out of the actual custom event here, so out of the execution, we're going to get a for loop, just a normal for loop here. The loop body is going to go into the spawn actor and the last index we're going to drag into the custom event as well, like so. And we are going to disconnect that click on the custom event and rename this to number of enemies. So as you can tell this is also going to allow us to determine how many enemies we want to actually spawn in. And we're going to come out of this and get an integer minus an integer, connecting that into the last index and leaving it as minus one. So if we were to input two into the custom event and go straight into the loop without the minus, that would do that too, but it will go from zero, one and two, which is then three. So what we can do to fix it is take one off, so instead of two it's one, which will spawn in two enemies, or we can change the first index to one. But I like to leave it at zero and take one off of this. Again, you can change that to be what you want, but number of enemies minus one is going to spawn in the correct amount of enemies we want. And obviously that's then going to cause a spawn actor function so many times so that we can spawn in that many enemies. Now I've completed, I'm going to hold down D left click to get a delay connecting that in there. And this delay is just essentially when we then want to spawn in the next lot of enemies. So we'll do that in a second. Out of completed, we're going to call function spawn enemy once again. Again, now we've got all of these different options in here. So for the delay, I'm going to right click on the duration, promote it to our variable and name this spawn delay. And I'm going to make this one instance editable. So tick that up there. Compile that and we will get errors because we haven't finished off the custom events. But essentially what this means is that we can now change the delay to be different for each instance of this blueprint which we place in the level. So what that means is if I were to place these in, so let's place one here and one here, you can see we can change the spawn delay here. So each one of these different actors 
can have a different spawn delay to make them nice and different and unique. So maybe you might want to spawn in one enemy in here and two enemies here and have this one spawning quicker than that one. Very easy to change if you wanted to do that. But let's go back in here and finish the rest of this off. And by default, I set this to five seconds. Compile, save that. And then on the custom event itself, I'm gonna right click the enemy, promote to variable and do the same thing. So I name this one enemy and make it instance editable. And again, this is just so we can very easily change it and make each one more dynamic inside the level. The spawn transform, we can do that as well, but what I'm gonna do is instead just get actor transform and then it's just gonna spawn the enemy in where the blueprint is placed in the level, which is what I want to do. And the last index, which I actually do want to rename to number of enemies, which it is that name, so for some reason that's not working. Let's refresh nodes, there we go. Uh, so to do that, sorry, you just right click and hit refresh nodes. I'm gonna right click on number of enemies, promote to variable as well. Also naming this number of enemies, and again, instance editable. So I'll go over all of that properly in a second of where we can change these values. So we compile, save that. Now what I'm gonna do is also give these default values. So again, the spawn delay, I set it to five. The enemy, I am gonna set it to my enemy VP since I only have one type of enemy in my game. Whereas you might have more than one, so you might have two or five or just the one. Again, I'm gonna do it like this. The number of enemies, I'm also gonna to set to a default of two. Compiling and saving that. Then we're gonna go back up to event begin play to this spawn enemy custom event here and do the same thing. So what I'm actually gonna do is just copy these and hit paste up here. Let's just move this up a little bit as well. So we can then just connect in enemy, spawn transform, and number of enemies there. I don't need the delay on this one as I wanted to do it straight away. So let's compile and save. And this is this part now working for us. So this is gonna spawn the enemies, changing which enemy it is, how often they spawn in, and how many spawn in as well, depending on what we set it to be. So again, when we call it, it's gonna figure out how many enemies we want to spawn in, determined on the amount we input it. Then it will spawn in the enemy we chose at the location we chose and once it's done that it will wait so many seconds that we also chose and then do the same thing again and again we can change this to be different for each instance of the blueprint which we place into level which again you can see here so i've placed one in here i want the spawn delay to be five the enemy to be enemy pp and the number of enemies to let's say five this one is again going to be spawn delay of let's say one this time Enemy BP is going to be the enemy BP, sorry, and then number of enemies I'll set to be one. So this one is going to be spawning one enemy, let's say every two seconds instead, just so it doesn't get too laggy while doing this example. One enemy every two seconds. This one will spawn five enemies every five seconds. And I'll put one more in down here. Spawn delay of three enemy BP and three enemies as well. So again, you can place in as many of these as you like, making them all custom and dynamic from each one as well. But I'm gonna have three in here because they're gonna be spawning in quite a lot of enemies. Again, just to show you this working as an example, you can customize this and change this quite a lot to make it working perfect for you and how you want it to look and how you want it to work in your game. And again, we can also see this little arrow here just so we can see where it is. You can obviously make that bigger if you wanted to. But what we also need to do is we also need to make sure that the enemies can move. Because at the moment, what's gonna happen is they'll spawn in, but they're not gonna move. A simple way to fix that is to go back to our enemy BP and open that up here, select enemy BP self, and then on the right, under pawn, we're gonna change auto possess AI from placed in world to placed in world or spawned. So now if we were to spawn them in like we are, they are gonna be auto possessed and they can then be moved around and chase the player and all that good stuff. So we're gonna hit compile, save, close all this, and here play to test this out. And now you can see they are following us like so. So they're spawning in and following us. This one is spawning in one every two seconds, I believe set it to. This one is spawning in five every five seconds, as you saw there. And again, all the different ones which I set up are also working as well. So this is working perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. So we've done everything we want to do, and it's all working perfectly. So what we've done is set up an enemy spawner, which will spawn in X amount of enemies every Y seconds, Working like this, and again, you can change each one to be different from each other with differing amounts of enemies, different spawn delay, and different enemy types as well. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.